freaking do? I'm like, shoot, look. Hey, Mom, look at me! Hey, Mom, I'm on TV. I made it! <laughs> Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Sit Down Podcast, your favorite podcast in the world. Um, and here again this week, we're back in the studio, guys. I know we've been kind of a little out of the studio here and there. Um, the season has been amazing. Um, I hope you guys have been loving what's been going on. I've been having such an awesome, fun time, man. Like my guests have been great. And we, I think so far we've had some really great conversation for a little bit of everybody. You know, everybody can enjoy the sit down. And that's what I love. And that's what I always try to like provide for you guys. You know, like I, cause like in my thing, it's, you are never alone. So come sit down with us. So if you ever feel like, you know, man, I'm bored, man, I'm feeling a little lonely, dude, like stuck in the house, you know, you can slap this podcast on and we have a conversation waiting for you. Um, but this week on this week of the sit down podcast, we have a great guest. We have a great guest. <laughs> this man's energy is just very like, what is that word? Um, what's the word? Crazy. Like, not <laughs> like it like jumps out at you, you know, and then you feel it. You feel the positive energy. Um, and what's great about this episode is um, we've known each other for some years now. But we've never had this time of like sitting down and get to know each other. So like this whole conversation that we're about to have and that you're about to listen to is going to be something like. Well, we're both going to be learning a lot about each other because we've had the time mostly in the gym is when we ever mm -hmm. like really interacted, you know, mm -hmm. and I actually saw you a few times while you were coaching. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right cause, yeah, I remember that. Um, but we never had like a full like sit down one on one. Um, and this is going to be the beauty of the conversation. We're going to learn a lot about each other today. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be lighthearted. Um, I have some I actually have some deep questions here on here because wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. uh, I was wondering, I was like, what should I talk to him about? But you said you want to talk about life. So I was like, let's talk about some life shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do some it. real life let's shit. Do it. Um, but my guest here today is Bruce. Um, welcome to the sit down, man. How you doing? How you feeling? <laughs> Feeling great, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Um, it's so cool to be here. Am I nervous? Yes. Um, <laughs> but you make it feel so comfortable. I feel so warm being here. Um, <clears throat> I do want to say, man, Anthony, you've been you've been hustling. You've been doing your thing, and I've seen you, like you said in the intro, like playing ball together and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, I talked to uh, one of my best homies. Uh, Campos mm. talked to him Eric Campos he was like um, Ant was always coming in early working mm -hmm. hard in the gym you know trying to get his shot down he would come in early and then he would leave late yeah. and he would ask for extra time to be on the court um, to hoop it up to you know get better in his craft and his ability and we were talking about you bro and he was mm. like that just shows like it, it's permeating uh, throughout the rest of his life and the mm. things that he puts his mind to right. um, they're successful because you know you have that heart and you have that dedication yeah. and dude I wanted to be on this show I mean it's outside of my comfort zone believe it or not uh but i wanted to get on here just to give you props for that because i recognize that hustle that drive um for uh also um coming out of colinga right like C playing town, ball right? yeah, yeah. yeah c town uh you <laughs> know little you know uh colinga horn toad yeah, you know yeah. um, All that. All that. <laughs> you, you you had so much heart and going from you know the high school team in colinga to go to to and play ball at West Hills yeah. it's not easy Yeah, it's not easy like I know there's a lot of cats over there that try to make that jump mm -hmm. and it's almost it's already you know you're going against the grain there's favoritism and stuff like that but when I, I came to your game and I saw you out there I was like he did it man <laughs> he freaking did it and I'm like so proud of you man because it didn't stop there for you obviously yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying <laughs> you, you, you're you you're continuing your drive and your motivation and you've got new roads new obstacles in front of you and you're just knocking them down dude and i'm so proud of you thank you so man. yeah thank you man i appreciate that for sure man. yeah that's well said dude you're an elegant speaker bro. <laughs> oh man you're an elegant speaker dude very captivating oh very captivating it, man have you given speeches before <laughs> you know um i i've preached you know at, at our church and stuff okay, like that i'm okay. a youth leader you know and then i i've done some work you know on, in missions and stuff like that but it's not easy for me <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah, yeah. I get I get so nervous and stuff like that um but every time but um you know I just jump in 
That's you good know? though. You <laughs> I know? tried to. <laughs> nervous, I think nervous. Like I, f- I forgot where I learned it. I don't know if I learned it at Greenville or I learned it in West Hills. Uh huh. But it was basically like nervous. I think I learned it in Greenville. But like nervousness means like one, you cared and you're prepared. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. if you weren't nervous and you were just like almost more embarrassed and like feeling not ready, that means yeah. you were like you didn't care or you didn't yeah. prepare. You know what I mean? So yeah. like that nervous feeling is just like. The combination of both. Yeah. Yeah. You know for I mean? sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. You care. Like you you want it. You, it matters to you that you're going to do your best. You know exactly, what I'm saying? So, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. every day of my life. <laughs> I'm just butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good intro of me, dude. Um, I, wa- I wanted to I wanted to open it up yeah. to you, dude. And I wanted to do ask this question. It, this question, like, I think will set it off. And I think is it and most of the time a rude question because okay. of how people say it yeah yeah yeah. but i just want to bring it to you and like and see how you deal with it man yeah. about bruce who do you think you are hmm. who the hell do you think you are yeah that's a good <laughs> one that's a good one you know um i think i am uh somebody who is trying to figure out the best version of themselves You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. if, all right. So, okay. That's a good question, dude. Cause, (laughs) cause I don't want to explain it like who you think I am, but, or who I am to you, but okay. I am, I'm a child of God. Um, I am a husband. I'm a father, you know, um, I, And basically, um, I am no better than anybody else. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hear you. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but, I, you know, I'm trying to, you know, become the better version of myself, you know, to develop who I am and, and be comfortable with, you know, who I am in my skin. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's who... Um, that's who I think I am. You know what I mean? That's that's who I am, right? Um, but I think I am sometimes, if I can go a little deeper, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a little existential here. here we are. Um, I feel like, you know, sometimes I think and I get in my head and I think that um, I'm not good enough. You know, I'm not um, funny or I'm not... Um, you know, all the, I'm, I'm not enough for for anybody, not for, you know, the people I love. And but that's that's why I have to fight against every single day, you know, to to really um, to show, you know, who I really am. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? You have yeah, to yeah. I have to. And, and I think that comes from my faith. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I have to use my faith to combat those thoughts, those negative thoughts of who I think I am mm-hmm. and to who I really am, you know, mm-hmm. who who I've been created to be. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm hearing Woo. is I'm hearing like two different things right now. OK. OK. And see if you can clear this up for me. I'm hearing you um, are a a man with flaws. Mm-hmm. A man with flaws, and like in every day you're trying to like I'm not uh, deduct the how much those flaws actually like show happen, mm-hmm. you know, occur, you know, whether like whether that's like being a better communicator like with your wife mm-hmm. or mm. being a better father to your children mm-hmm. or you know even a better speaker to your youth yeah you know those kind of things Mm -hmm. and not letting like the flaws within you like affect different type of relationships yeah you know but then also too i'm hearing it's like a battle also too like you know because like sometimes you know we're egotistical you know you have a bigger like thought about who you are and that also too you got to be humble Uh uh-huh you know because of your faith you know because of god you know like yeah and so it's just all like intertwined into you know constantly trying to improve every day yeah right yeah. is that what i'm hearing yeah that's it man like i i um you know i can get down on myself but you know i have to you know we use use my faith to kind of bring myself back up you know because life is going to tear us down regardless you know what i mean like right. it's it's working it's it's doing its best to you know cripple you and to stop you from you know exploring who you really are or or growing as an individual mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. so yeah 
just fighting that negativity. Hey, we're battling. <laughs> Everyone battles with it every day, man. Yeah. Everyone yeah. always is constantly battling with it. Yeah. Know? Especially nowadays, you know? Yeah. Or you know what? It, it's like, I'm in the flaws. The thing is, it, everybody has them, right? Everybody has their flaws. Um, I think in the, in the last three years, two or three years, um, I've been okay and comfortable acknowledging them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, they're there. It's okay. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And do they define me? No, no, they don't define me, but mm-hmm. I can, I can get through them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be, you know, talk about, yeah, man, I'm not good at this. I'm not good <laughs> at that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, then, yeah. But I'm trying, I'm trying to get better. Right. And, and so I feel like in the past I've been so focused on uh, performance and making sure I look good, make sure I sound good mm-hmm. in front of people. And meanwhile, on the inside, I'm breaking down, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I'm kind of decaying on the inside. Cause it's like, there's some truth that's not being shared, you know right, what I mean? Right. But I feel like within these past two or three years, I feel like I've been able to share that truth, you know, and just walk in it and be like, Hey, I'm, I got some flaws, you know, I got some things I need to work on. I am not perfect. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And in that I've been able to find that victory, you know, Mm -hmm. I've been able to keep my head up and and get through each day. You know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, dude, I hear that. <laughs> it's like, it's funny too, because like I've been kind of low key, like, I don't want to say preaching, but like kind of explain to everyone, like, my process of like, um, almost like uh, self talking myself. Yeah. I don't know why it's self talking yeah. myself. I don't mm-hmm. think I need to exercise myself, but <laughs> self talking to, I see, I need myself, but yeah, anyways, yeah. Um, but like kind of like giving like um, yourself constant like therapy sessions, checking yeah. in with yourself, uh-huh. you know, because I, because I, and it's something that clicked later on in life. But I remember my dad was always telling me like, like you need to relax, like you're you're too hard on yourself, things like that. Mm. Um, but I think when like people are too hard on themselves, sometimes they stop listening to themselves. Yeah, you know, and yes. so like, and that becomes a problem too because it's like you at the end of the day, like yourself only knows best for yourself. Mm-hmm. So like you have to like let those voices in, and like you can't get anxious about them. You can't let them mm-hmm. like like. Um, like cripple you, but mm-hmm. you do have to listen to them because like, so maybe yeah. something there is wrong, you know, maybe yeah. like, it could actually be like a health issue and you're like, no, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. But it's like, we'll check on that, you mm-hmm. know, or maybe it's something like internal that like something happened and then you're kind of just trying to move past it and then you're not letting yourself like grieve or even yeah. just be angry. You know, sometimes yeah. people are like scared of being angry, but yeah, you know, like it's okay to be angry. It's okay to feel like these raw emotions, you know, because sometimes like those raw emotions can get kind of twisted into like a very different action that they get lost where it's like, why did I just do that? Mm-hmm. You know, but maybe it's cause it's like that emotion turned into something else and now you don't recognize it. Exactly. Right. It's like, it's an alarm system, you know, mm-hmm. it's why we mm-hmm. have pain, you know, it, it's, it's because our body is telling us that something's the matter, you know? Mm-hmm. And so when we have these symptoms, which of, of pain, of anger, of depression, of sadness, it's like, it's a, it's for a reason. It's because our heart is trying to tell us something, something's yeah. the matter. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like this alarm going off, like, wee, wee, react do something you can you know you know look for the help that you need you know if Mm -hmm. it's you know mental health resources you know talking to a therapist or talking to a a pastor or or talking to your your mentor or whoever's in your life that you trust um and and getting that help that you need you know Mm -hmm. what i mean because um i think too often we we try to um just avoid discussing those things with Mm -hmm. anger of depression and it's like no, when we're able to address it and be like, you know what? I struggle with it. Yeah. How do I get help? Where do I go? Mm. And and then when you're doing that, figure out what is it exactly that's causing it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um because once we do that, once I figure out like why am I sad all the time? Mm. Um the next time I feel sad, I know how to overcome it. Yeah, you exactly, know what I mean? Exactly. And I'm not just like, oh, let me medicate it. Let me just take a drink. Let yeah. me just, you know, get a puff of this. No, it's like, how can I really fix that and not just medicate it? Not mask you know what I mean? It, yeah. yeah, yeah, not mask it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because, mm-hmm. um, you know, some people have to take medications. That's fine, you know? Yeah. But what is it at the source, you know, yeah. what is it that, that you can do to make it better? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's 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 what makes sense to yeah. me. So. And also, too, like, um, like eight, eight times out of ten for me, 
I was debating that number in my head. But like eight times out of ten for me, like when I even if I just like talk about it, you know, like with one of my buddies or even my girlfriend or something. When you hear it out loud, you kind of figure it out yourself. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like you'd be like, "Oh yeah, this is this," and I like when this, this happened, da da da, and then you're like, "Wait, uh-huh. oh, you know what I mean?" Now yeah. like you're like, "Wait, like why?" Like you know what I mean? So you kind of exactly. like you just hearing it out loud. You could. It's almost like laying it on the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you're like, yeah. "Oh, like okay," and then you know within that conversation, you kind of you know mostly figure that out yourself. But then you also take uh-huh. in that little bit from whoever you're talking to, exactly. and then you're like. Um, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So like, exactly. that's, like, even just like the act of even saying it out loud, uh-huh. you know, gets you to that like that resolution. Faster. Exactly. You know, because yes. when you keep it in your head, it stays fuzzy. Uh huh. You know, it's like trying to do math in your head. You're like, <laughs> wait, four. Wait, what was down here again? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You forget. Exactly. Like your mind will lose certain like key elements. You right. Know? Right. You know. Yeah. And that's also too like kind of the root of like this podcast personally for mm-hmm. me because like. And since I'm constantly talking to new people and like giving my opinion on certain things, like mm-hmm. it's helped me a lot with my like clarity of my thoughts because like I'm constantly saying them, I'm constantly putting them out. So like I'm at like pretty good like like um what, what pretty good like uh clarity about what I think mm-hmm. and everything because I'm constantly yeah. saying it. I don't just keep it in my head, right? And then like forget about it or. You know what I mean? Because I'm constantly thinking for myself because I have to, like, yeah. say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Because, like, that's a lot of things, too, is, like, you don't really know what you think or what you feel until you actually kind of say it out loud and put it out in the world. Because, like, you know, like, words are spells, you know, like, mm-hmm. you, you spell them into the world. Like, so you kind of, like, speak your, your, like, your truth. You speak your... Exactly. What actually... Because, like, it's, like, your head, your thoughts, everything. And I feel like by the time when it gets to your mouth, there's, like, a filter. <laughs> there's, yeah. like, a filter yeah. there where, we're like... Where it won't allow you to say certain things because you're like, I actually don't believe that. I actually mm. don't like believe in that. I actually don't concur with that. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm at yeah. odds with that. But in your head, you fully agreed with them. But then when you're sitting across another person, you come to say it, it all kind of gets filtered out. And you say it and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait what? That's what I believe. Like, wait, what? You know what I mean? Yes. And like yes. things start connecting differently when you actually say it out loud and put it on the table. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Cause like, you know, and especially when those same themes and those same ideas come back in conversation, it's like, wait, you know, how do I really feel about mm-hmm. that? You know what yeah. I mean? Or who do I think I am? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Who the yeah. hell are you? Yeah, who the hell am I, man? Yeah, yeah. Gotta Dang. ask yourself something out in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The hell am I? Exactly. Yeah. No, that's good, man. That's a good <laughs> question. Ponder that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Um, I wanted to get into a little bit, man, because I'm curious and I'm interested about, like, you said you're the media specialist of West Hills. Mm-hmm. Is that both West Hills campuses or just, like, West Hills Kalinga? So it's um, West Hills Kalinga, but... Um, they have different satellite colleges or satellite campuses, I should say, that are affiliated with it. Mm-hmm. So Fireball, you ever been? I forget Fireball? about Fireball. Yeah. yeah, I forget that one's there. Yeah, yeah, it's a small campus, but they're um, they're rebuilding right now. They're gonna have a fully renovated building, fully not renovated, but built from the ground up um, campus over there in Fireball. So it's really exciting. Um, but yeah, I'll go sometimes back and forth from, you know, Fireball to Colinga. Um, and there's a satellite, um, campus in Mendota. You know, Mm -hmm. I can't, I went to maybe a couple times. Um, but yeah, in Lemoore, I think I visited, uh, a couple times to help train uh, one of the staff out there, kind of in my position, mm-hmm. um, just kind of showing him the ropes and stuff like that. But he's right. got it. Yeah, yeah. He's good. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I don't have to go out there that often. Um, but yeah, so it's just ma- mainly Colinga uh, on just campus. Kind of support every and, now and then. Yeah, or too. yeah, and I'll get um, phone calls to to Fireball and you know work mm, things out. So. Okay, okay. What is that job like? What does it entail? Yeah. How long have you been working it? So I've been working it since, uh, I want to say 2017. Um, I've been over there and basically I take care of all of the projectors, TV screens, microphone, any electronic device that's in the classroom. Mm. That's my domain. Like mm-hmm. I take care of it. Um, 
in in some of the computers um, are particularly for um, IT, like the IT department and stuff like that. I'm kind of the cousin of IT, mm-hmm. so I handle or the baby cousin. So yeah. <laughs> I handle all the uh, the other aspects of you know the electronics on campus and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, there's this this program that they do. Um, the the classrooms they telecommunicate so they do like video conference calls within the classroom. So you'll have a classroom in Colinga and a classroom in Fireball that are looking at each other on the screen in yeah, front of the room. Yeah, yeah. So you probably, you probably been one of those. Yeah. 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 So um, I make sure that that's, you know, rolling smoothly. You know, if there's any kind of interruptions with like the technology, I have to get in there behind that cabinet and work it out. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's a microphone issue, I have to replace it uh, or buy new equipment altogether. So mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much what I do. Aside from uh, there's that, and then there's also like the events and stuff that happen on campus. So like in the graduation ceremonies. So I'll set up like speaker systems. Mm. Um, I'll yeah. communicate. They have a projector, don't they? Or no? Yeah. And well, I think yeah. Probably at your graduation, oh. it was a there was projectors on the side, and yeah. they were kind of showing like a slideshow and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'll be in charge of something like that. Um, what else like the events in the quads the rallies and stuff like that i'll mm. put up a pa system um what else is really cool how, how, how did you get into that job because you've been working so, for three years so yeah. like, what's the route into okay so and i'm being was, very personal here because i'm a, oh, I no, got my degree good. in media communication so i'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like trying to like figure this shit out yeah no that's dope that's <laughs> dope trying to figure this shit out. yes yes I lo- i'll answer any <laughs> question so um i was a custodian so mm-hmm. in 2011 that's when i got my job over there at the district um mm-hmm. office and in, in uh, f west hills and so i was working as a custodian for about six years almost seven. And then, um, I ran into the media specialist at the time. We were both in fireball. <clears throat> Miguel, shout out to Miguel. Um, we were, yeah, we were in the classroom. I was, you know, cleaning it up. I was vacuuming and stuff like that. And I saw him there. I actually saw him before that. The first time I saw Miguel was on this video. Um, he was doing this, um, promotional video with a guy named Dennis Gallegos, mm-hmm. um, who's a filmmaker. And I, if you know me, you know, I love movies and film, all that good stuff. So, um, when I saw Miguel with this other guy, I was like, and people were telling me, Hey, you need to talk to Dennis. If you like movies and you like want to get into film, talk to Dennis. So I saw Miguel and I was like, yo, Miguel, how do you, how do you get close to Dennis? You know, how you get to do, you know, promotional videos and stuff yeah. like that for West Hills. And, um, he was like, uh, well, yeah, I was just by chance, but you know, I was just doing my job as like a media specialist handling the equipment and stuff like that. So I'm like, so how do you get to be a media specialist? Right, you know, right. was that deconstruction thing? Yeah. No. Yeah. So, um, so he's like, oh yeah. So I just handle all this. He kind of explained, you know, what he did and was like, you should apply, you know, I'm actually going to be moving up into it. So if you want to, you know, take this job, go for it, apply for it. I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> so I did, you know, um, meanwhile, I also had a job working as, um, what was it? Um, just the uh, media. It was kind of, it wasn't necessarily a media specialist, um, but it was working with projectors and the sound system mm-hmm. at the Parks and Rec, oh, right? Okay, okay. So I was working at Parks and Rec for a while um, as I was a custodian and um, I was doing their promotional videos. You know, have you ever heard, uh, you know, Jared, Jared Warren? He was like that name the, actually rings a bell, but yeah, he worked for Parks and Rec. He yeah, did a lot I, of stuff I, in I here. Did, I was a, a utility worker for Parks oh, and Rec. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For a while, yeah, yeah. You might have run into him then Probably, for sure. Yeah. He um, so I would work really closely with him, and we would put on uh, promotional videos when he would do um, tournaments in here. Did he do City of Love? Yes, yes, that was a guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, so, I won City of Love the first year, by the way. Like, oh, okay, like, like, okay. Like. Watch out now. Watch <laughs> out. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so he did City okay. Love, and I did the promotional video for that you might have seen it i don't know Mm. you could see it i mean it was a big deal (laughs) no but uh anyways i did the video and uh it came out really good and so we we kept doing videos and promotions like that for um the parks and rec Mm. um as well as you know setting up the screen and the projector and the sound system for um the farmer's market so they Mm. did like movie in the park at night during the summer 
Um, and so I had that long days for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I imagine, dude. <laughs> so, um, I kind of had that in my back pocket. So when I went into, um, apply in an interview for the job, you know, I was like, Hey, I have that experience in this, you know, setting up equipment and technology and stuff like that. And they picked me up. So, damn. Okay. Well, yeah. Congrats, dude. Thanks, dude. You know, <laughs> I appreciate later. it. Yeah, I know. Man, I know. I've been trying to get in West Hills the last like two years, bro. They, oh, really? They won't even give me an interview. Oh no. Yes, bro. They were making me mad, dude. <sighs> They're making me hell. I'll talk to somebody, dude. I'll talk to somebody. I'll let them know. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool, though, dude, because, like, because, like, I have my degree in psych and media communications, you know? Yeah. And, like, um, and I'm just, like, because, like, and I know that's how it works. Like, sometimes you just, like, like, you're just working for this opportunity that just, that just feels like blowing in the air and mm-hmm. it feels like you're, like, never going to catch it, right? Mm-hmm. But then, like, one day, like, it just kind of, like falls right you know yeah. what i mean and that's yeah. what i'm hoping for that's what i'm waiting on right now you yeah know? like i'm waiting on like for that opportunity to fall right yeah you know because like right so far i haven't had any luck i haven't had any luck but yeah you know i'm still trying heck yeah dude yeah just keep trying like oh, yeah. west hills is a really good um company to work for you know they take really good care of their employees mm-hmm. and stuff and it's just it's it's really rewarding to be able to you know give back to your community yeah, directly exactly you know what I mean? with, with them, education like, that's why i went to school my yeah mom, you know things like that yeah so, so, so I understand people there you know yeah absolutely mm-hmm. and so kind of going back to um why I wanted to to catch up with you and everything with the podcast is because they had been mentioning um, the staff and some of the faculty have been mm-hmm. talking about uh, putting some kind of a podcast together mm-hmm. uh, on campus because you know back in the day they have like they had uh, campus DJs you know where they're like talking to, oh I'm mixing the ones and twos you know <laughs> tuning in uh, and all that and 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 they um, there was a student that was. Uh, coordinating, facilitating, and managing the radio station, right? Mm. This is kind of old school stuff for you kids. Uh, (laughs) But no, uh, so I was thinking, you know, I think that a lot of people were thinking that um, kind of put a new spin on it, a new touch on it would be a podcast so that, Mm. you know, everybody can be in the know by watching the show, what's happening on campus, what's coming up, um, or what they should know. Um, Because what better way to find stuff out uh, other than a long form conversation, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I was like, okay, you know, I'll I'll do what I can. I'll figure out what we can do, and and uh, and so I, I'm looking into purchasing equipment like this. Mm-hmm. You know, the what is this Blue Yetis? The yeah. so like stuff like that um, for the college. Um, and I even had a meeting, just a one-on-one meeting with the president, you know, mm-hmm. uh, President Timms, Brenda Timms. Shout out to President Brenda Timms. Um, so she... Hey, hire me. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he's a hustler, man. He gets right. in it. He gets it done. <laughs> uh, so he she she was telling me that you know we want to be able to engage students that's what's important you know to kind of get word out and to uh, make the students feel like they're part of something a part of the campus you know Mm -hmm. um and so i was like hey i've been talking i've been talking to faculty i've been talking to staff and they think a podcast will be a really good opportunity for us to do that to meet that need you know and she was for it man she Mm -hmm. was like yeah let's let's figure it out let's we have a space Mm -hmm. uh on campus um, that we could use. What do you think? Mm. Um, and I was like, let's do the podcast. Because, <laughs> you know, you remember where the bookstore was? It was yeah, it was in that little, um, like, off to the right. Yeah, I know. It was. Yeah, so that bookstore's, it's gone, um, unfortunately. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Because so. there's no more snacks and stuff in there? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they, they kind of um, went in a different direction because a lot of our books are OER, which is like online um, ed- educational resources, which is free textbooks. Basically, it's free textbooks for mm-hmm. students. So, um, any of you people out there, just a commercial for it, West Hills, <laughs> you know, hey, once you go here, you can go anywhere. Hey, West Hills I'm College. Back. So, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's a really cool uh, opportunity for people if you're concerned about, you know, like paying for books and stuff like yeah. that. It's too expensive for me. There's no way. Well, what they did was there's um, there's these resources that you can go online in their catalog and you can download these books for like health for I believe there was um, like psych was on there. I have to look back, but um, there was a lot of books that are free right? To just for to, you know to digitally download and so anyway that's the kind of direction and route that we're going in west hills